Well, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the coffee lecture on Research Rabbit Explore Literature via Citation Networks. My name is Annette Guignard, and I work at the ETH, ETH Library as an information specialist. So let's start. Um, I will first give you a little bit of theory on how searching via network functions. We look at the anatomy of a paper and then at the types of networks. Then we apply the theory using the tool Research Rabbit. At the end, I will draw your attention on the limitations and give you some recommendations. So let me start with a look at the anatomy of a, of a scientific paper. What are the structural elements of a paper? Why is that important? Because all the tools that you use for searching literature, they make use of specific pieces of information that are in scientific papers. So it's really good to have a mental image of this. Let's take a look at this paper as an example. And we take a really a, a bird's eye view and just look at the element that it consists of. On the one hand, there is this structural information describing the paper. We call it descriptive metadata. What is the paper about? The paper title, the keywords, and the abstract, they give a little glimpse on the content. Then, of course, it's the question is by whom? So the authors and the affiliations are give, give information on that. Who has um, contributed to the paper and from which universities or institutions do these authors come from? Furthermore, there is information about the journal, the journal title, the volume, year issue, and the pages on which this, this, this article is on. And so, so it gives information where and when the paper was published. And last but not least, there is the DOI and identifier, which identifies this exact paper in a very clear way. So that, that is the metadata that describes and helps identifying this paper. And all database searches make use of these fields. And then furthermore, there is at the very end of, the, of each paper, the references, the outgoing citations. So it, it, they, well, it's just, it's just references to the, the papers that are cited by this paper. And if you look at these elements, the pieces of information that are used, mostly used to analyze and then visualize the networks of papers are the references here in yellow and the author and affiliations here marked in green. Alternatively, there is also the abstracts and paper title and keywords, which can, which can build an, a topical uh, approach and a topical network that's marked in blue. Now, if you imagine all the papers published and how they are connected to each other via the same references, same authors, same affiliations, every paper cites existing papers and hopefully will be cited by, by future papers, which researchers, they collaborate with each other and co-author papers. And all these connections build a huge, overwhelming network, net, net, network, which can be used, for example, to discover papers of interest. There are two types of networks, the citation networks and the collaboration networks. Let's have a look at them. Um, in the citation networks, there are terms that, used, that, that are usually used to describe it. So far, I have talked about scientific papers, but these you can also call just papers or articles or journal art articles or works. And to start your search in a, um, start your search in a tool that visualizes the citation network, you need to already have identified a paper that is important for your work. That choice is, of course, subjective because it's, in my view, important or maybe in my supervisor's view, an important paper. And this paper is the starting, the starting point and it can be called seed paper or source paper. And it is marked with this uh, red dot here. This part, um, now, this seed paper or source paper has references, means it cites earlier, earlier works that, that are the green dots. And later in time, this seed work will be cited by later works. So it and and even and the later works will be cited by other later works. So this gives a, a, lo a lot of connections. Um, and the thing, the, the the citations they evolve over time. That is the citation network. Then on the other hand, there is the 
the collab collaboration networks. For this, this is based on the persons, the researchers. For this type of network, collaboration of researchers is measured by analyzing the co-authorships. The connection between two authors is stronger the more papers they publish together. So in this illustration, you see that the line is wider or fatter if two authors have co-authored more publications together. This kind of network can also be applied to institutions. So for, for example, what connections does my group or institute have with other groups of researchers in, at my institution or another institution? <clears throat> So after this theoretical look at things, let's move forward to the practical application. Today, today I would like to demo the Research Rabbit. It's a tool that uses these networks to find interesting literature. That is the start page of Research Rabbit, and you see um, you have to log in. You have to sign up um, to use this tool. The tool, tool is free of cost, and you can use any email to sign up. Once you, are, uh, you, you have uh, entered uh, research a bit, the procedure is always the same. You create a collection or select, it, select an existing collection. You add a paper, that, that is your seed paper. Here, here is my seed paper that we, I will use as an example, and I will copy and paste the DOI to, 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 to add then later in the tool. And then you can explore, and in the end, you can export the selected papers that you have found into, into your um, research uh, reference manager, sorry. Okay, so let's change to the demo. That is the interface. It's very, it's very simple. Here I have already um, uh, made a, 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 a collection called Coffee Lecture and now I will add the paper. I'll enter the DOI, click Add directly. And then this paper is added. I can click on it and uh, it will be shown, including the, the abstract. I can even go to the PDF if I want to, but now we want to jump a little bit around and see what, what other papers are connected to uh, in the network to this paper. You see in this bar, all the, all the possibilities to explore. And first let's go to the references, all references. I click on it and then a list of all the references are are displayed and on the right hand side the network is shown. The green dot is my, my source paper and all the blue dots are uh, papers being cited by the Brigenti paper. You can also toggle between network view and timeline view and like this you see that all these papers are older of course because this one cites the other papers. Then you can click on on the on on the dots, and then you can look at at the at the title and abstract of each each of this of the papers here. And as soon as you find something which is really interesting, you add it to your collection here, and then it's added on the left hand side. You can jump back again. I, I usually close holdings, otherwise it gets it gets a bit confusing. And I cho cho choose another. Uh, I I go back to my I select this one again. And I go to into the other right direction and show this want to see the citations. The say it's it's the same way as it works, and you can just look around and see if if you find something which is of interest to you. You can add it if it if it's an interesting article to you to your collection, and it's it's added here. And so you can jump around and and explore and explore as long as 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 you would like. You can also go. Uh, and see see these uh, connected authors and so on. But uh, it's it's easier if you if you just try it out yourself. Then that I they, they mow it too long. In the end, you select all the ones that you have have uh, found and found interesting, and then export them um, um, in these three formats: it's pip dash res or csv, and you can add it to to your reference manager. That was the short demo. Now I go back. To the presentation. <clears throat> now I would like to talk a little bit about limitations and give you some recommendations. Um, if, if you use any tool, it's always the question, what is the data source that, that is used by this tool? Research Rabbit, for instance, uses Semantic Scholar and PubMed. And of course, there is no data source that course covers everything. So you won't find everything. It's always just part of, part of the full, full thing. 
Um, and in research rabbit and the other tools, the analysis and visualization is always based on just a subset of data. It's in, in research rabbit, they usually use only 50 papers to make this network. So it's just a subset of the data that it's kind of a result list. And you have to know also that tools, these kind of tools, they emerge and disappear. So the longevity of a tool is not really guaranteed. So it's really nice to use it, but don't store your, your selected articles in it because it might not live forever. So my recommendation is use these tools with, limit, with, the, with these limitations in mind. It cannot replace a classic ser a search in a classic database, and it cannot, cannot re re replace your reference management tools, but it can really serve as an additional discovery path. And if you like visual approaches, it's really nice. It's, it's, just, it's different than just have a an, an result list. So I would encourage you to try them and find out if you if you like them. You don't have to use them, but it's it's a nice addition. Here on my last slide, there is a little bit of further information that the help for research rabbit is on the right hand side of the of the of the interface. There you can read a, a little bit how it's working and so on. And there are other tools with very similar approaches. They are called, for instance, connected papers, insightful, and lit, lit, lit maps. Try one of them and find out which one um, works best for you. And on our website, the ETH lab, library website, you find also a lot of information for classic searches and these kind of searches. So that's it. Thank you very much for your attention. We will stop now the uh, recording and then it's time for your questions.